Uh, as Samuel said, my name is uh, Ruth Pasuelo. I am the owner of a business intelligence company in Sweden. It specializes in Power BI and together with Miguel Escobar, unfortunately he couldn't be here today. We have created the, uh, developed the STMX connector working with David and Jonathan, it's been a pleasure. And we're really, really excited to show you this today. We've worked very hard and I'm really, really hoping that you enjoy it as much as we do. So let me share my screen. Share, there you go. And let me know if you see something that looks like Power BI. Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I want to uh, talk about two things today. I want to talk about obviously the SDMX connector and a little bit about Power BI, some clicks that you need to do in order to get everything working. And as I see that some of you do not know really Power BI, we will walk you through very, very briefly about what it is and what are the advantages of actually integrating SDMX sources with Power BI. So that's the goal for my session. So first of all, for me, there are two main reasons why it is absolutely fantastic to have SDMX integrated in Power BI. Number one, Power BI is one of the fastest growing business intelligence tool in the market and reaches millions of people. Through Power BI, you can reach also Excel users, which is around 1 billion users in the world. So it's such a huge audience. But also Power BI is a tool made for data analysts, business users, not only IT professionals. So it basically opens up the possibility for business users and non IT professionals to get access to SDMX data, which is fantastic. You have United Nations, you have IMF, you have, you will see on the show, on the sessions later, some demonstrations of how you can actually get the data and it's really, really easy. So I will not show you how to connect or how to install the connector because David is going to do that. So I've already have it installed in Power BI. Power BI, for those of you who do not know, it is a platform. So it's a business intelligence platform. And it has two main components. One is Power BI Desktop, which is what you see on, in front of you on the computer. And then it has something that is called Power BI Service. So Power BI Desktop, which is that, is software that you can install. It's completely free. You go to powerbi.com, you just download it, and you can start analyzing data. It is like a superset of Excel. It has... Uh, a lot of more advanced capabilities that Excel, it can consume more data, but it, it is more or less like Excel. It has a look and feel of Excel too. And Power BI service we will talk about briefly at the end of the session, so you will see. Okay, first of all, I want to say that if you want to, once you connect the data, David will show you that, but once you connect, to, once you install the connector, the SDMX connector in Power BI, you need to go to options and then on the security tab that is going to pop up here, here security, you need to make sure that you have not recommended this, allow any extension to load, because that will allow you to see the connector. If you don't have that, it won't allow you to connect. Make sure that you do that. But once you've done that, you install the connector, you go here to get data. The experience is similar to Excel. You go here to more, and the SDMX connector, you're going to find it here under other. You can scroll, but it's actually easier to search. You can do SDMX, and then it'll show in there. You can see that it says beta. All connectors that are not certified has this beta thing, but they are fully useful and, and, and completely fully developed. Uh, to certify the connection, they will talk about that process later, so I'm not going to do it but it will basically mean that you will get it installed into Power BI out of the box. You don't need to install it yourself, it will come from Power BI. It says here that it gets SDMX RESTful web service that supports CSV format. This is important. So it is only CSV format supported at the moment. If you would like to have any other uh, format supported, just please let uh, David and Jonathan know. Uh, JSON, whatever it is, for now we're just focusing on the CSV format. You click connect, and this is the experience that you are going to get. The first thing is going to ask you about a data query URL. So depending on which service you are connecting to, for example, if they are OECD or if it's Eurostat, they have their own query builder. You have to use their own query builder to build the, the, the URL. That will not be able to do it. The connector will not be able to do it. Obviously, there are different parameters. 
different it, it has to be specific for the data provider but once you have that you create your url for the data that you want to connect the only thing that you need to do is paste it in there you then have three options you can show codes and labels codes only or labels only. I'll show you what it is. I'm going to pick actually codes and labels so you can see both. And then you can pick a language if you have a preferred, a preferred language. Otherwise, you just leave it blank and then click OK. If you've never connected before, it's going to ask you to authenticate. All SDMX connections are anonymous at the moment. So you see that you only have an option anonymous, so you click Connect. And that's all you need to do. And then it will go, it'll connect and it will go and grab the data to the source. The first thing you'll see that is it will present you some sample data. You can see here, here you cannot do anything other than look at the data and see, is this, is this right? Is this what I wanted? And then you have two options. You can transform the data or load. Load it will load directly into Power BI so you can start visualizing. But transform data, it will take you to what is called Power Query. You have it also in Excel. And it's basically the place where you can go and transform your data. You can add columns, remove columns, append data, anything that you like. And here you have also the possibility, you see there's a gear in here, you have the possibility if you click in there to actually make changes. You get the SDMX connector experience again and you say, oh no, I just want to have codes or labels or I just want to have it in another language or whatever it is that you would like to do. As you can see here, do you see the, here, this is the code and after the column is the label. So this is what you can choose. You can either choose to have this one or that one or both, right? And then here you can see the web call that was actually sent to the service. And this is the URL that we pasted. If you want, you can change it in here. In order to see the formula bar though, you need to go here and enable formula bar, otherwise you won't see this and you will not be able to change it. But you can always do a new get data, right? And get this SDMX connector, get a new, uh, a new query. Now, I'm gonna show you, because I prepared for this presentation, a report. This is data from Eurostat. It's the population change in Europe. So I wanna show you some of the capabilities of STMX and Power BI together. So the first source is the Eurostat API. You see it's a STMX call. The second source, it is a source from GitHub. So Eurostat uses something called NATS to divide European geographical regions. So you have like country, uh, region, county, municipality. So we're grabbing that information directly from GitHub. And then I have a calendar also to, in order to be able to do time intelligence. So you will be able to combine STMX sources with anything that you like, with web connectors, with on-prem data, with Excel, CSV, text, you name it. So it, it is really powerful and very, very easy to connect. Once you have public, uh, get the data, you create your beautiful report. And when you're happy with it, this is what you can do. This is what the Power BI service comes in place. So you can go in here, and you see this is published. If you click on it, first it will ask you to save, and then it will say, okay, we're going to publish your report, pick a destination. These things in Power BI are called workspaces, and a workspace is basically like a bucket where you can put reports in. So you can have like a marketing workspace. It's a place for marketing to have their reports and only they have access, things like that. So if you pick a destination, you publish it and then it gets published to the web. And it will be, once it's published, it will give you a link so you can click on it and go to Power BI service. Let me show you the experience of the survey in here. So once you have published it, it will take you here. This is what you will see. You will see the same report in the web. You can see here the URL. And there are a few things that you can do here. Internally, you can obviously subscribe, you can chat in Teams, things like that. But you can also export the report to PowerPoint, PDF. Here you can analyze it to Excel. You can, if you click in there, it will move your data to an Excel file. And if you save that Excel file, in SharePoint or OneDrive, it will actually connect live. So when Power BI refreshes, 
the Excel file would refresh also. So you have Excel users that want this data, no problem. They can also get it and they don't need to have access to Power. They need to have access to Power BI, but they don't need to work in Power BI. There are a few more things I want to show you. You can embed it on a website or a portal, or you can publish the web. You can, this is a link, for example, for publish the web. Anyone that have access to this link will have access to the report and it's also searchable on Google. So be careful how you publish the web. The data will be available publicly, which for data providers is a good thing. For companies, maybe not so good, be careful. I wanna show you one thing though. If we go here again to the containers, social media, this is what's called um, the, the workspaces. If we look for our report in here, you will see it here. You have a data set and a report that was created when we published the information to Power BI service, right? So the data set is basically, you have the data set available in Power BI for create additional reports. So you can curate a report with your favorite SDMX sources and then allow people to create their own reports, analyzing Excel, for example. But there is a very cool thing with this. If you go and click in here, and then go here to settings. You see here, it takes just a few seconds to load, but you see here it says schedule refresh. You have the possibility to schedule refresh your SDMX sources through the SDMX connector, which is really nice. The thing that you need to be aware of though, is that you need a personal gateway. It's something that you will install. If you go here to download, you can get the gateway here. You can also get the Power BI desktop in there. So, you need to download the data gateway, um, uh, personal data gateway, and then here on connectors, you need to be able to enable these, okay? And then you'll see that all the connectors that you have, here is the SDMX will load, and then we'll allow the automatic, or the schedule refresh of your sources. You need to do one more thing though, which is the data source, the data source credentials. You need to authenticate yourself again on the service. Even if you already authenticate yourself on Power BI Desktop, you need to do it on the service in order for this to work. You just click Edit Credentials, you set it to Anonymous, and then this is public data, so you set it to public, and that's it. You don't need to do anything else. And when you've done everything, look at this. Schedule refresh, and then you say daily or weekly, what time, and then you can have, depending on the license of Power BI, you can have either eight times or 64 times, I think. So there are a few licenses in Power BI service you have free, and that is basically personal use. You have pro, which means that for $10 per user per month, you are able to share with all the people that have a pro license. So both of you need to have pro. And then there is the big one, there's a premium license where you buy capacity at Microsoft. It costs like $5,000 a month, that's a big one. But if that is too expensive, there is an in-between pro and premium that would allow you to, for $20 a month per user, to have some premium capabilities. And that will give you like 64 refreshes if you need them. So these are the amazing things that you can do when you are connecting SDMX sources with Power BI. We are really, really excited. And I really hope that you're excited too and you give it a go and you let us know if there are anything that doesn't work or any features that you would like to have and things like that. So if there is any questions. Thank you, Ruth. Um, we have actually uh, six questions. Um, uh, where a few of them are related to the to the connector. Mm -hmm. Now we had the one question about the use of Power BI. So Power BI is it free or open source? So Power BI is not an open source uh, uh, a tool. It's a Microsoft tool, but it's available for free. I uh, put actually the the link to the download. So it's uh, in the powerbi.microsoft.com. And of course, as you mentioned, Ruth, there are uh, services that are uh, are uh, are not free, of course, when you disseminate the information on the report, but at least you can use it for, for free uh, to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions related to the connector. What is the advantage of the uh, SDMX Power BI connector compared to the, uh, to the web uh, connector with the API? 
good question, good question. Before the connector, um, you had to parse the JSON or the information in Power BI, in the Power Query experience, the one that I showed you. And it requires a little bit of knowledge of Power Query in order to do that. So you will probably need help from an IT professional or a Power BI professional to get the information. With the Power BI connector, you have the possibility to just by put in the link, it will read the data correctly, and you will be able to schedule it refresh. Right? So those are the main advantages of using the connector rather than the web. You can connect with the web though, with a web connector in Power BI. You just need to create a, a function, code the function that parses the information correctly. Thank you. Uh, related to the to the queries, actually, we have one interesting question. Uh, is it possible to use? Sorry, it was my clock for for the time. <laughs> You're on time. <laughs> I'm on time. <laughs> uh, yes, is it possible to use direct queries with the Zenmix Power BI connector? So the direct queries will allow you to. Uh, access and extract the information, the underlying data without having to, uh, to import. So like, for instance, you choose a country and then you extract the information with the query you, you, you build. Uh, yeah, no, at the moment you need to import the data. So it's good if you, question, yeah, yeah, yeah. If that is a requirement, it's good to, to add it on the, on the Q&A so it can be noted. Okay. Uh, there is also one question related to the institutional gateway. Is it possible to use an institutional gateway because there are uh, corporate restrictions, constraints sometimes? Yes, yes, obviously. So when the connector gets certified, yes. So we need to certify the connector first. Okay, and uh, I have another one. Is the World Bank data uh, available as an SDMX source? We should probably know our world. Oh, yeah, I don't know that one. Maybe somebody, yeah. maybe Jonathan or David know? David, maybe uh, if you have any information. Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Okay. If we can connect the World Bank uh, data. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, so, yes. So, uh, basic, so basically it depends on uh, if the World Bank uh, can serve up the data in SDMX CSV format. And it's the same for every single data source. Okay, I, I was going to come to this anyway in, in my part of the presentation. Okay, uh, and maybe we can uh, we can ask a few, uh, respond to a few few more uh, related to the uh, functionality of the Power BI connector. Is it available with Power BI Report Server? You are not allowed to install custom connectors on Report Server. Okay, so it's a limitation by Microsoft rather than the connector. Uh, okay, so well, there, are, there are really a uh, good interest in that. So there are a lot of, of them, but I think we, we can follow, uh, follow the, the next presentation. We are uh, almost- Yeah, the good thing, if I may say, is uh, if, the co if the connector gets certified, then it will get be available as a out of the box. So please vote for certification. We'll, um, we'll talk about that. Get to that. Yes. Maybe it's presentation. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll ask maybe, uh, maybe uh, Ruth and, and David, if you can answer the questions so we can, uh, we can go with the next presentations. They're all available on the Q&A future of Zoom. So uh, even for the attendees, if you want to uh, ask questions, don't hesitate to use the Q&A and not the chat. Uh, and and the the panelists will uh, will be happy to to answer your your questions in live. Okay, so next presentation uh, will uh, uh, will discuss about one use case. So Julian Pogor, uh, which is the data architect and statistical tools engineer uh, at the ILO, uh, will present the use case on on labor market statistics. Uh, and how easy it was or it is to connect, uh, to use this connector to uh, create Power BI dashboards and, and visualization. So uh, I'll give you the floor, Julian. Yes, uh, thank you, Samuel. I uh, hope you all can hear me well. Uh, I apologize in advance because I'll have to put on my glasses, but they do a bit of glare. Uh, it'll be okay because I'll switch to share screen, so you'll see the demo in, in a second. 
so thank you for the introduction. As Samuel said, I'm a, a data architect and a statistical tool engineer at the ILO. I actually work in the statistics department and uh, we do strive to you know, provide access to our data sets for all the means possible, as the MX being one of the main ones for data APIs. So uh, when uh, you know, our OECD colleagues provided access to uh, SDMX Data Connector, we were really excited to actually test it out and see how it's going to work with our services. My demo is going to focus a lot on the first part when you create those uh, you know, uh, queries for the data, because we do provide tools for those. Uh, let me start by sharing my screen. Do you see my screen now? Can someone just give me a thumbs up or something? All right, got it. Uh, so this is our website. It's uh, focusing specifically on the statistics services and products that we are providing to our country constituents and our users. As you can see, we have a number of publications, you know, besides all the resources. And lately we do publish a lot of short articles, uh, what we call stories or posts. And those are very powerful because uh, they have a short message to convey uh, with the use of visualizations. So it's not so much text as you would find in like long reports. This is just a short uh, news article uh, where users can read uh, the message, but it can also explore the data. And, you know, with the use of tools like Power BI, these data sets have become kind of interactive visualizations, uh, let users drill deeper and dig deeper in the data. They can also download the data sets and do their own analysis if they wish so. Uh, so how do you create these connections to Power BI? Uh, we do provide tools for those. Uh, it's uh, uh, mainly in the data section uh, for our website uh, and we have uh, specific data API tools. Uh, one of them being the SMX Query Builder. So here in a very kind of user-friendly interface, uh, the developer can set up uh, the data flow uh, they're interested in. It's a very simple form, they can choose the category and data flow, and then they can also choose if they wish to have data for one particular country, all the countries. Um, also the format, I guess, uh, for uh, SDMX data connector, uh, the generic SDMX 2.1 should work. And then here they can just generate the URL and get the URL and plug it in the uh, SDMX uh, connector in Power BI. Um, the tool kind of showed that part uh, in her demo. I'll just quickly touch base on it later. Uh, we are also developing uh, a new uh, way to connect uh, to and explore our data sets is through uh, Data Explorer. It's a new tool. Uh, we are soon to be to publish it. It's built on uh, .stat suite, so it's kind of part of the SDMX uh, pro product service. And in here, the the user can actually explore our data sets uh, in more detail before they even get the query they need. So they can go and explore by subject. I'm just going to go and search for a term that's very popular. It's probably one of the most uh, used uh, measure of labor market. It's the unemployment. So I'm just going to go and select the first uh, data set. And in here, the user is going to get the data table basically that they're interested in. And they can customize and filter for what they need. So I'm, I'm just going to go a bit deeper and uh, say, I want data for all the countries. I don't want data for groups. I'm just going to select, unselect all the groups. So now data only for countries should be there. Also, I want to see data it's aggregated by male and female. Age should be okay like this. And then I'll just going to exclude the, you know, rural and urban, so just going to focus on national data. So now I basically get the, the data table that I'm interested to bring in Power BI. <clears throat> there are multiple ways to do it. You know, one would be to download the data set uh, in Excel or CSV, but that would mean that the data set would be static. So once you download it in your computer, you can load it in Power BI easily, but then you lose all this live connection to our uh, data source. Uh, so what does a developer in Power BI, what you really want is to get the URL specific to this particular data table, it's the data flow, and it connects live to our database. So from here, kind of get the connector, uh, I'll load Power BI. So this is, goes into the part of presentation that True did, but uh, just go over it simply with a simple chart. So 
So the URL goes in here. Uh, the Power Connector does provide options uh, to customize the query further. So uh, in my case, I'll just say I want to have some labels and I'm interested in English. Uh, by the way, we do provide data in French and Spanish as well, I guess, uh, as part of the UN institutions. Uh, so like the languages approved for dissemination of data sets. And you can see it only takes a few seconds to load the data. And this connection becomes a live uh, connection to a live database. So each time we update the database, it's also easy to update the data and the visualizations uh, as we've presented either for a schedule refresh or uh, you know, it can be done manually as well. So now we have a data set loaded. Um, as you remember, it's the unemployment indicator we are looking at. It's really simple to see the data for all the countries in a, you know, in a world map. So I'm gonna choose the world map here for visualizations. I'm gonna the reference area and location. And I get the observation value in the size. So voila, you can see, you can compare all the country data kind of visually very easily, very quickly. Power BI does provide this uh, dynamic visualization. So basically you can mouse over and get more details uh, if you're interested, for example, in Russia, tells you exactly what's the value. Uh, and this also can be easily customized. So now with the tooltip uh, descriptor, it actually tells you exactly what it is. So from here, you know, we, we publish it on the Power BI server. And save it locally before I publish on the server. You can go in my workbook. It takes a few seconds to get everything, the visualization and the data behind it on the Power BI server. And from here, we can kind of share it and embed it easily uh, on any website. So from here, we kind of build this uh, visualizations where we, you know, we can put it in our website. We can also decide to share them further, uh, including the data behind it. So Power BI does provide this uh, options in the sharing of, uh, menu. You can actually choose to not only share it on your website, uh, news media and, you know, other institutions can pick up on it and can share it further. It does require for, you know, for the connected itself, it does require of the institution to provide the data in SDMX format. Uh, and I think more and more, and more institutions uh, for international organizations, they do provide this. It's a commonly agreed standard, SDMX. And also more and more statistical offices are uh, embarking on the standard and you know providing their data sets in SDMX. So it's really useful you know, by having this connector to, if you want to connect to National Statistical Office of uh, Australia, for example, you can go and get and set up your query using their tools, get the URL, put it in Power BI and build your own visualization, which you can share you know, in, on either your website. These visual, visualizations are also easily shared in uh, social media. So if I show you another example. So in here, you can actually post this on your Facebook, LinkedIn profile, um, and it's going to have a direct link to the, the source. So once you publish it on the, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, it's not a static visualization. It's always going to update with the latest data. So if in the chart I built or in the source data set, you know, on our website in the APIs, we do update uh, data regularly. Those uh, latest data sets basically are going to make it to the visualization as well. So that's it for my part. Uh, let me switch back. Uh, thank you, Julian. So thank you for uh, showing us how easy it was to uh, to connect uh, actually the ILO data uh, to Power BI and, and and how easy it is to promote the uh, the data that we that we disseminate on on different uh, on different tools into uh, uh, such a tool as Power BI. Uh, uh, of course, using this uh, Power BI connector. So let's go to the questions. Uh, so I'll keep one for the end of, uh, of the presentations. 
Hello, we have one from Quentin. Once the connector is certified, will it be available at data flow level in shared workspaces of Power BI service? I don't know if um, any of the panelists want to answer this now or later. Okay, let's keep it for uh, uh, later this webinar. So once you publish it, uh, it will get updated automatically. So once you publish the dashboard, is it updated automatically? Sorry, I, I mean, I can reply to this question because we, based on our experience, it's not. And I think it goes back to the rules presentation where you have to schedule these refreshes regularly. So it, it can be done, you know, depending on the license uh, that the user has, it can be done as often as every hour. Uh, in our case, we do update our data sets uh, every week because we get data from countries, you know, regularly. So every week we do publish uh, the data sets. We know when we publish updates to the data sets. And that's when we schedule this uh, refreshes of Power BI visualizations to happen kind of around the same time. So then we always know that we have the latest data in the visualizations. So I, I saw a question related to the certification of this Power BI connector. Again, you uh, uh, will be informed on how to vote for that certification and ask all your colleagues, friends, and family to vote for that. Okay, so uh, can you talk more about the visuals uh, integrated by uh, Julian on ILOSTAT? Are they from Power BI Embedded? So the ones that you've just uh, shown, uh, Julian, are they uh, embedded uh, directly into the website? Uh, so they're very easy to embed. Not all of them are built in Power BI. So we are a statistics uh, agency or statistics department in our unit in the ILO in the UN. Uh, so we do use a multitude of tools. So we don't rely on Power BI solely. Power BI is one of them, but we do use a lot of them. So it's, and we have kind of different economists and statisticians that prefer to use the tools they are used to, uh, but yeah, certainly like Power BI is one of them and what you saw online can be achieved with Power BI or any other kind of similar tool. Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions, but uh, we'll answer a um, uh, uh, bit uh, later, but we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll go with the next presentation, Phil. So Phil Bright, uh, GIS and uh, uh, innovation and Dissemination Lead at the Statistics for Development Division in SPC uh, will uh, present the second use case uh, with the use of the International Merchandise Trade Statistics. Uh, we'll uh, see also how to the connector uh, uh, fits into the, the, the overall dissemination, including the uh, combination with the with the GIS uh, uh, connector. So Phil, I give you the floor. Thank you, uh, Samuel. So uh, yes, I'll, I'll go over a little bit of an, an overview of how we're fitting STMX into our dissemination workflow, including, uh, I guess, in the context of the Power BI connector. And I'll also give an example of this uh, IMTS um, dashboard that we've just recently released. Now, in, in our organization, so in the Pacific community, um, I'm in the Statistics for Development Division, and more and more we're using SDMX as part of our data collection uh, dissemination kind of process. And I won't go into this slide in detail. What I want to concentrate on is this last part. So the, the, the wide and the widening uh, range of dissemination channels that we're actually using that's, that are pulling data from DOTSTAT. This includes Power BI and, and various dashboards and visualiza visualizations and, and so forth. So the primary interface for us, for our users accessing our SDMX data is through the, the DOTSTAT uh, Data Explorer. And here's where we can go and, and pull out uh, various data sets. We also have something called the Pacific Data Hub, and this is a, a CCAN data hub that is harvesting data from a whole range of sources, including from our, our .stat database. And so through here, a user can search for data and essentially be directed back to uh, the .stat uh, data explorer to visualize those same data sets. 
we also have a range of uh, connectors, plugins and, and scripts and so forth that we're using to improve access to that data. Excel, uh, Python, Stata, R, and Power BI, which is the one obviously that we're, we're talking about today. We also have uh, CMS modules that have been developed primarily for Drupal, which is, is uh, the, the main uh, CMS that we're using in the organization. But some of these have also been ported to WordPress for some of our member countries. And so everything here is being pulled out of, of .stat. And so we've got key statistics. We've got these two visualizations at the bottom are high charts of visualizations uh, that are integrated into our websites that are both pulling data from SDMX. And we're also um, uh, trying to replace uh, things like Excel spreadsheets on our websites. And so by using these uh, entities that we've created that link directly back to the source, it means that we can have users all connecting to data in one place and not having multiple sources of our, our files and, and so forth. And something that's working very, very well for us is, is social media as a way of uh, getting information out that's in our SDMX database and bringing or driving traffic back to it. So improving visibility. And in fact, one went out this week uh, looking at trade data. And so uh, imports from New Zealand to Samoa in the Pacific. And in these tweets and LinkedIn posts and so forth, we had a link back to our corporate website with a small article with a visualization which both linked to uh, our data explorer. So people could view that data that was in the visualization as well as an extended version of that through the Power BI dashboard that we'd uh, recently released. So now we'll go and have a look at this dashboard in a little bit more detail. Here I'm in Power BI desktop and I'll go through the report pages uh, relatively quickly to show you what they look like. And so we have a, an overview of, of trade data here, pulling data by country and by year. And obviously uh, being Power BI, this, is, this has got, uh, is interactive and we can um, filter the various visualizations uh, by clicking on various parts of our charts and, and so forth. We have a, a flow of trade. And so here looking at Samoa in 2019, I can go and change this to Fiji, for example, and have a look at exporters uh, exporting to Fiji and the amount of that uh, trade flow in 2019 for Fiji. Another visualization that we're using is uh, another way of, I guess, looking at trade flow. So here we can look at importers to Fiji in 2019. Uh, likewise, we can have a look at exporters um, from Fiji, oh, sorry, countries that Fiji exported to in 2019. And we can uh, also interact with this visualization and have a look at uh, the various relationships through the visualization. We also have um, trade map uh, for exports and for imports. And this is not, oh, here we go, it's a little bit slow. And so here we have a, a map uh, with the exclusive economic zone boundaries for the Pacific that allow us to visualize export or the principal export in 2018 for the various countries. And so Papua New Guinea is the big one with mineral products and had uh, 5 billion US dollars worth of exports in 2018. Now, before I, I show you how this map is, is put together, I'll very, very quickly show you um, which you've already now seen several times, where this data has come from. I, you can see at the top here, we've got the, the, uh, the string, the API string that's coming from .stat. And so I won't repeat the process and show you how to get it. Um, in fact, just, and here is, is that data set that's in, uh, in .stat itself. And so that's the API string that we're, we're using there. What's interesting is that, so these, this on the right hand side here, these applied steps uh, to pivot the data, to uh, add, remove columns and, and so forth. There's about 10 or so of them in there. Now here on the screen are the steps that were involved when we were scripting this. And so up until this um, uh, connector was released, 
we were basically doing what Ruth was referring to um, by scripting this and connecting to the API. And there must be about 50 steps that were, were involved here. So it made it much more complex. Uh, now it's much, much simpler for, I guess, general users to connect to the data and not need to be experts to be able to manipulate that. Okay, so now if I, uh, here we are, if I go to, <coughs> excuse me, my last report page here, I've just taken a, a copy of what I had for exports because it will take too much time otherwise. But we uh, wanted to, to put some uh, data on a map where we could add our own layer. So the problem with the Pacific is the countries are very, very small. And so if we try and visualize them all at once, we can't actually see anything. And I'll show you very quickly uh, how this is done with Mapbox. And so to add uh, an additional visual, we go to this get more visuals in Power BI and you type in Mapbox and then it, it loads this Mapbox visual here, which is what we see on the screen. We then have, uh, I, sorry, I need to select my visual. We then have, um, if you start adding uh, location data and, and so forth, the, the visual actually tells you, uh, you need to do a few things to, uh, to be able to use the, the Mapbox visual itself. And in the visualization settings, there's an access token that's required. And so you need to create a Mapbox account and it has this uh, access token and you can actually create access token tokens for each of your visualizations which then enables you to monitor the usage uh, of that uh, particular visualization and so if I add this back uh, in here that is my access token I've already gone and changed some of the default settings for things like map style and I have a particular zoom level and a latitude and longitude so that we uh, zoom over the Pacific and it doesn't by default take us to, to the US or to Europe. Um, you will notice here that we've got data that's automatically mapped because I've, I've already selected a few of the fields from my data set and other than Papua New Guinea we can hardly see anything and so this is why we wanted to bring in our own map layer. And so if we have a look further down in these settings there's a few of the default things like the geocoder and the, and the circle that have been turned off but what we want to use is a, what's called a chloroplast map. And so by default, it's, it's mapping to global countries, which is a, a map box uh, layer. And I would like to use a custom tile set. And so this is then accessing a custom tile set that's uh, in a uh, map box. And here we have a vector tile URL, a source layer, and a, a, a vector property. So a field name that I have in, uh, in Mapbox. So when a layer or a sort of spatial layer is uploaded to Mapbox, uh, which is fairly straightforward and, and it's, it's very uh, easy to, and they explain how to do it. There is then a, uh, a tile set ID. Um, so this is, is associated with my tile set that I, I copy. And then inside that tile set, which is, this is what I have here. This is my exclusive economic zone boundaries. There's a, a layer ID and the field that I would like to, to essentially do the join on. And so this is what I've already added in here in these three different, uh, different areas. And the result being that I can now map my data using my, my custom layer. Now, uh, the previous two speakers mentioned uh, how we publish. So I'm not going to go in any detail on that, but um, here I have my data set in Power BI Online. Here is my shared version of um, uh, that project publicly available. What you'll notice is that my map is not displaying here. And something we discovered is that if uh, anyone's using or if a user is using the last pass password manager extension, it actually clashes with Mapbox, unfortunately. So we have this message that displays if a user is using that extension, Using a, uh, a private mode or incognito window uh, gets around that. But uh, I noticed this is a, a uh, feature request or a bug fix uh, that's been outstanding for the last couple of years. Otherwise, for us, when it comes to embedding Power BI into our websites, uh, what we've been doing is uh, creating a sub report attached to our data set in Power BI with a single visualization. So here we've just got one visualization that comes from that report that is, that is fully interactive. 
and we then have a link that takes the user to the full uh, report uh, that uh, is publicly available. And uh, that's uh, basically it for me. So I will, I will stop there and, and I guess leave things uh, for questions. Thank you, uh, Phil. Okay, so we, uh, we have one question related to Mapbox. Is Mapbox free? And does it have limitations to be aware of? Uh, yes, creating a Mapbox account is free. Um, the limitations are as far as usage is concerned. And so uh, something like 50,000 uh, loads a month, I think, are free. And then after that, you have to start paying. And so for us, for the moment, we haven't used it enough for that to be an issue. Um, but if it gets very popular, then we'll have to look at having to pay ourselves. So. Okay. Uh... Okay, so I see other questions, but maybe we'll, uh, I'll ask the panelists to transfer the content one for ILO and, um, and we'll go now with the last presentation. So we'll have a bit more time for questions after David's uh, presentation. So David, it's uh, now your turn to, uh, uh, to share the information on the uh, installation process and, and maybe limitations on the, on the connector. Uh, if we want to uh, to have as a, an SDMX source uh, interfaced uh, with uh, with one dashboard, so and of course, of course, how to uh, uh, have this SDMX Power BI connector officially certified by Microsoft? So again, uh, we'll uh, we'll ask you your uh, participation in uh, in uh, in uh, voting for the certification of that uh, that connector. So David, is your turn. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Samuel, and uh, thank you to all the presenters so far. So, um, yes, yeah, so, so far we've seen the, the, the usefulness and, uh, and all the power of, uh, of using the uh, connector. I mean, certainly more, more features than, than I knew uh, existed. So, um, but how, how do we actually start using the connector? Okay, so how, how to install it? Um, so I'll, I'll go over three things, uh, where to find the connector, uh, you know, where is the repository, uh, also how to install it and the, the, the documentation, where, are, where, where is that? Uh, and then I'll talk about the, the next steps for the connector. So uh, first of all, uh, how to uh, find the connector, where is the repository? So, uh, oh, I should share my screen, sorry. Um, okay, share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. So then um, how to find the repository. So, well, let, let's try just doing a, um, uh, a Google search for it rather than giving a, a specific link. So if I search for CC Power BI SDMX and it's the first, it's first link here. So I'll click on this and it should take us straight to the uh, repository. Um, so uh, here we are. The connector file itself is this uh, MEZ file. This is what we will be installing, but we can also see things like the, the license file and uh, everything else here is uh, mainly like uh, the, the, the source the source file. So it can be uh, customized because it's an open source uh, project. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, so, so let's go to the, uh, the installation. So uh, at the bottom here, we can see the documentation for the installation steps and the usage instructions. So I'll click on installation. And this will start telling us, you know, how to uh, go through the installation. So um, first of all, I need to download the STMX MEZ file. So I'll click on this. And download it here and uh, it will have been downloaded in my downloads file okay so if I just go back to the uh, instructions again so now uh, I'll open Power BI uh, desktop which is already uh, here and uh, oh, yeah, so it's and I'll, I'll just see, well, I'll, I'll just uh, prove that I don't already have the connector installed. So if I click on get data, 
And then I search for STMX. I think uh, you know Ruth already showed this, but uh, I'll just show that it doesn't already exist when it decides to actually come up. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. So here we are. So I search for STMX. We can see that there's nothing matched, okay, because I don't have it installed. So let's install it. So if I go back to my downloads folder where I, I downloaded this file, so I'll copy this. Okay, so now I need to go to my documents folder and there's this folder here, Power BI Desktop Custom Connectors. If it doesn't exist, I have to, uh, I have to create it. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, I already have it, but uh, so if I go here, so I'm in Documents, Power BI Desktop, uh, Custom Connectors, okay? And we can see that I have no custom connectors. So let me paste the MEZ file that I downloaded. So here it is. Now, if I go back to Power BI Desktop, and now if I click on Get Data, I mean, for me, uh, I, don't, I don't have to actually uh, restart Power BI Desktop, but I think in a previous version, uh, I did have to do that. But, uh, you, you know, we'll see that uh, with this one, I don't have to. Coming out. seconds hopefully okay so um then i type in stmx and now i can see the connector yeah and i click on connect and it will show the uh, the dialog of course i'm not going to go through this because it was already shown by my by my colleagues okay but uh that that's the installation just just another thing to to check that ruth uh, already mentioned is that we have to say in file options uh, security we have to enable an option which uh, makes sure that uh, custom connectors can actually be used in in Power BI. Okay, which is this one in data extensions allow any extension to load without validation. Uh, and as long as that's checked, then then it's okay. Um, again, this is described in the uh, in the installation instructions just here. Okay, so so that's that's the installation done. Um, so I'll talk about next steps. Uh, I'll just have a couple of minutes. So um, there was an earlier question on uh, does the connector uh, work? With, uh, with with like all web services, with, with certain data sources like the World Bank, uh, but you could ask this about any kind of SDMX data source. So for it to work, it, the, the web service has to be able to serve up uh, SDMX CSV uh, using uh, an accept header, uh, which works in a standard way. I mean, basically it's a standard way to like serve up SDMX CSV data. So um, uh, now, in case your web service doesn't do that, well, perhaps you could take the opportunity to upgrade to the latest NSI web service. So this is part of the SDMX reference infrastructure. This is what's used by .stat. So of course, if you're using it like uh, .stat, then you'll already have that, okay? But for, for other data sources, maybe not .stat, uh, then uh, you know they could they can also implement one of the latest uh, NSI web services uh, that does that, and then then it will work fine. Um, so we've seen that the uh, the installation of the Power BI connector is already very very easy. I mean, I did it in like a, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, so um, what we're looking at now is, as as Ruth talked about, is a certification process uh, with Microsoft. We've already started this process. And, um, you, you know, because this will basically allow the connector to be used without any installation. Your colleagues won't have to go through these steps at all. Uh, you know, we keep it kind of maintained uh, and things like that. Um, so, um, yeah, it, this could mean that there's just an extra step for users where they have to click on like, uh, you know, credentials and say anonymous, because this is like open data uh, after all. Uh, that's what the connector is um, uh, meant for, designed for. Now, but uh, in order to, to help with the certification process, um, 
I'd really like you to now uh, go to this, uh, this link and vote for the Power BI idea. Okay, there's already this like SDMX connector Power BI idea, and this is the one that's been watched. So um, the URL was already put in the chat. I think I'll put it in there again. Okay, just in case it's kind of disappeared, uh, you know, up there. But uh, please, you know, so if you could go to this link, vote for this idea. You may have to like, you know, sign into Microsoft or even create an account, but it's free. And please, please do that because, you know, we need these votes to, to increase. Um, so I think that that's it for me. So just to conclude, you know, I showed you where to find the, uh, uh, the installation instructions, et cetera, and all the code. You know, from a Google search, uh, you know, how to install it. And I'll describe some of the next steps uh, as well. And uh, so please vote for the, uh, for the idea. And uh, that's it. So thanks a lot. Back to Samuel. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you. And, uh, and again, I'll ask you all to vote, vote, vote for the certification of the Power BI, as in Mix Power BI Connector. So we want to, at least at the end, after the questions, to see maybe why not 100 votes for the. For